Hello and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Rev. Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of absolutely everyone who is helping to lead worship today, we welcome you. We are so excited that you have chosen to worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church today, and I want to extend a special welcome if it's your first time worshiping with us. We're so excited that you are here. I want to encourage you to use our contact form. The link to that is in the comments section, and there's a QR code on your screen as well. Um, please go ahead and put your name and contact information in there so that we can get to know you better, can connect you with our e-newsletter, answer questions you have, um, and so that we can uh, come up alongside you in your life of faith. And please know that on that contact form, there is also a place for prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and prayer team. So we hope that everyone will use that contact form today. Now, when we gather for online worship, we always covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. Our covenant of participation means, well, that we're going to participate in what it is that we're doing. This isn't just a random video you're watching today. This is worship of God and worship with one another. So we encourage you to turn off other devices and distractions, to stand up and sing when it's time to stand up and sing, to pray when it's time to pray, to really focus in and fully participate with all that you are in this time of worship. And then we covenant together to be a blessing. And that means that the way that we're in the comment section together, the way that we may be gathered with other people, wherever it is we are, the way that we're sending this out into the world, that all of it is a blessing to absolutely everyone who is involved. Now today is Palm Sunday. It's the beginning of Holy Week as we go with Jesus into Jerusalem and through the stories and the experiences of his uh, last week on earth that culminates in Easter Sunday next week. Um, and so for Palm Sunday today, if you would like to uh, gather some kind of a branch or a leaf, maybe a potted plant of some kind, you might want to have that to be able to wave it during the, sing the singing of our Palm Sunday hymn. Him, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. So there's a heads up that might be fun for you. Again, we're so glad that you are here today. Welcome to worship. We stand at the precipice of Lent and Holy Week. This day moves from shouting and praising to a time of crying and lament. The drama of the story of Jesus' last week reads like the book of our lives. Feeling hopeful one moment, we plummet the next as we deal with disappointment, danger, and grief. God's incarnation on earth was not immune from this roller coaster we call life. One thing we know when the going gets rough is the last thing on our minds is climbing the ladder of self-improvement. We just want to survive, to be comforted, to have our pain known and embraced, and so we turn from the isolation of perfection and turn toward deep love. It is never too late to nurture the garden of relationships, for we are all a group project. What in our lives do we dream about for tomorrow? Void of sorrow, time spent regretting decisions of our yesterdays. Mistakes we made, sometimes we get what we get. Life disappoints us and yet. God is still here and somehow this faith is good enough. What in our lives do we dream about for tomorrow? Void of sorrow, time spent regretting decisions of our yesterdays. Mistakes we made, sometimes we get what we get. Life disappoints us, and yet, God is still here, and somehow this faith is good enough.
Hello, my name is Diane Steinbaker. I am part of prayer group, Miriam Circle, and Zephyr Sunday School class. Please join with me in a spirit of prayer. Holy One, God of goodness, we call out to you at the gates of righteousness, sometimes in praise, sometimes in distress, sometimes both at once. We long to be in your house in the presence of beloveds, binding the festal procession with branches. Open us this day to your love in and through the webs of our relationships and in the simple and good enough moments that fill our days. Amen. Good morning. My name is Jill Gordon. I'm a member of DAUMC and president of United Methodist Women, also now known as United Women in Faith. Jesus orchestrated a low-budget parade in a city where he knew his days were numbered. Get me a colt, he said, not a steed, not a float, but a young green donkey. Not the color, but horse speak for not ridden a lot yet. And folks gathered and his friends started some liturgical shouting that ticked off the local priests. Life is hard and we all need friends and sometimes big loud praying that will not be messed with. We are created for interdependence. So all are hiding and pretending that we are perfectly fine. All on our own just won't work. Get on the donkey when you need to and let people lay down their cloaks for you and make some noise for you. You know you'll do it for them too when the chips are down. So what keeps you from connectedness with others? Take a moment of silence, offering our reflections and confessions to God. Hear this compassionate word from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Know that already God is offering us freedom from isolation and we are called into the kind of community Christ had in mind for all. We are invited to the audacity of interdependence so that we might recognize love in its giving and receiving. And know that despite our sometimes faltering steps, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are being forgiven even now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. With this assurance of Jesus' love and forgiveness, let's share that love and peace with one another.
you can say, peace be with you, and respond, and also with you. Share that in the comments. Share that with whomever you might be gathered with for this worship, and please share that with me. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Ashley. And I'm Chloe, and we are from Tennessee. We just moved to Springfield, and we are so thankful and happy to have found a home at Douglas Avenue. Peace, Peace be, be with, with you. you. Hi, my name's Diana Trost. I'm on the missions team for the garden, and I'm also in United Methodist Women in Peace Be With You. Hello, I'm Tammy Schroeder, and I play with the bell choir, and peace be with you. Yes, indeed, it is time for small talk. I want to invite all of the children who are joining with us in online worship to come in really close to your device and to your screen so that you can see and hear absolutely everything that goes on with small talk. Small talk is led by Miss Laurie, our director of children and youth ministries and her amazing assistant, Laud the Lamb. So here it is, small talk. Hello everybody, it is Miss Lori and Laud the Lamb and his assistant Cohen. And tis the season. It is Easter. The season of peeps. Yes. Now, I think we remember not everybody likes these. You're either team peep or you are so you don't like them. So this household for the most part is team peep, right? And so Laud, what's your favorite color? We've got right here, we got we got yellow, we've got pink, we've got purple, we've got blue. Blue is your favorite? Excellent. They even have peeps on a stick. This is very exciting. So we're going to take out our peeps on a stick. So blue is your favorite, you say. Okay, well, let's take off the blue one. Hmm. There you go. There's your, your blue peep. I prefer the traditional yellow. Yes, yes, I do. Now, when you take a bite of the peep, look, so, oh, look at that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. The marshmallow peep. Now, I'm curious. If I take a bite of the green one, ooh, that's part of a mama stick. Huh. This is the same. Here, I'll pull. There, I'll hold you, pull, push. Hmm. This peep is stuck. You'll notice. Guess what, guys? The peeps are all the same inside. The only thing different is the coloring on the outside. The inside, the same. Whether they're pink, blue, green, yellow, purple, doesn't matter the color. Inside, we are all the same. We are all God's peeps. Yep, all God's peeps. It doesn't matter anyone's color. What's on the inside that counts? On the inside, we're the same. So keep that in mind, guys, as we are in this Easter season. Colors, they don't matter. Side. We're the same and we are all God's peeps. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. Good morning, everyone. I'm Joe Johnson, co-chair of the missions committee here at Douglas. And I'm Becca Johnson, the other part of that co-chair. Our reading from the Bible today is from Luke chapter 19, verses 28 through 40. Let us open our hearts and minds to hear what God is saying to us through our Bible reading today. Jesus went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem, when he had come near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives. He sent two of the disciples on ahead. 
Jesus told them, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it, as Jesus had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They said, The Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully. With a loud voice, they praised God for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed Blessed is is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord. Peace Peace in heaven and and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. May God bless our hearing and our understanding of the Bible reading we've received today. Amen. Please join us in singing Hosanna, Loud Hosanna. Experiences of the COVID-19 pandemic over the last two years have taken us all into some unexpected places. There has been sickness and worry, fear, financial problems, emotional stresses, education challenges, holding community together, and, and just so much more. There have also been some amazing new life born into unexpected places as well. Creativity and ways to be together, supporting people in need in our community in new ways, Zoom gatherings and parties and parades, online worship and all kinds of togetherness projects, arts and crafts, exercise and health projects, and expressions of music, dance, and all the arts. It's really quite remarkable. One of the more lighthearted moments from uh, our initial stay at home time at the beginning of the pandemic two years ago was the week that my family spent building a playlist of the greatest cover songs of all time. Now you might have some favorite cover songs as well. I encourage you to put some of those into uh, the comment section as we go. Now in this project, we never felt like the list was complete but we did spend a lot of time listing out our favorite covers, and these are some of the great ones. Van Halen's cover of Roy Orbison's Pretty Woman, Bonnie Raitt's cover of John Prine's Angel from Montgomery, Jimi Hendrix's cover of Bob Dylan's All Along the Watchtower, the Bangles cover of Simon and Garfunkel's Hazy Shade of Winter, Whitney Houston's cover of Dolly Parton's I Will Always Love You, Alien Ant Farm's cover of Michael Jackson's Smooth Criminal, 
Now, personally, I'm a huge fan of Ava Cassidy's cover of Sting's Fields of Gold and Cowboy Junkie's cover of Lou Reed's Sweet Jane and Melissa Etheridge's cover of Bruce Springsteen's, Bruce Springsteen's Thunder Road. I could just go on and on. And again, I encourage you, if you want to, to put in some of your favorite covers of great songs. You know, when people cover other people's original songs, it's a work of people supporting and helping one another on building on the shoulders of songwriters and performers to create a new take, uh, a new sound, a new interpretation, a new addition to this catalog of powerful musical expression. It's a group project that bears fruit beyond the sum of its parts. Now, I think one of the most epic and memorable covers has to be Joe Cocker's explosive rendition of the Beatles with a little help from my friends. Surrounded by soul, organ, guitar riffs by Jimmy Page, and backed up with a gospel chorus, Joe wails it out. I get by with a little help from my friends. Yeah, you know the song. I know you do. I think that this could be the unofficial theme song for this Palm Sunday and our Bible reading for today. It's all too easy to fall into the world's temptation to believe that we are all on our own in this world that we are uniquely and exclusively responsible for whatever success or achievement we find, or that we've gotten ourselves into this mess all on our own and that we'll have to find our way out of it without any help. But life isn't like that. We have all have received help from other people so that any individual triumphs are always surrounded by the long list of thank yous to all the people who helped along the way, like our individual Grammy Award shows. On the other hand, when we face trouble in our lives, many of us can point to those we've reached out to or who've reached out to us to lend support, encouragement, and resources to help us through. Although it can often feel like we're getting graded as individuals, in the messy reality of relationships, our lives are much more like a group project. In order to get by, we all need a little help a lot of help from our friends. As Jesus is getting ready to enter Jerusalem for what will be his final week of life and teaching before his execution, he asks his friends to help him. He tells them to find a colt for him to ride on, not a chariot or a war horse or any sign of royalty, but a colt. And they do. And as Jesus rides into the city, a crowd of friends and admirers gathers. They begin to remember and retell the stories of Jesus' deeds of power, his miracles and signs and teachings that testify to his true royalty and true might in ways that a military parade could never do. They cheer for Jesus and offer praises to God. I have to imagine that Jesus is encouraged in this moment. He knows that this trip to Jerusalem is going to, it's going to end badly with conflict and violence and death and his friends lost in despair. But in this moment of Palm Sunday, Jesus is lifted up, supported, loved, and strengthened by his friends for the hard week ahead. We make a lot of the stories uh, we remember at the end of Holy Week of how Jesus' friends let him down. How the disciples couldn't stay awake to pray with him in the Garden of Gethsemane before his arrest. How Judas sold him out with a kiss for a bag of silver coins. How Peter denied even knowing him when confronted outside of Jesus' trial. And how his friends ran away. But we can also tell stories of how Jesus' friends showed up. We can talk about them wanting to fight to the death to protect Jesus from arrest. We can talk about those who came to help and ease his deathly burden as he carried his cross to execution on Golgotha. We can talk about the women who risked their own arrest and execution and stood beneath the cross as witness to his dying. We can talk about Joseph who risked his life and status to beg to be allowed to bury Jesus in his own tomb. We can talk about Mary and Mary and Martha and other unnamed women who came at the earliest possible moment at dawn after the Sabbath 
to prepare his corpse for permanent burial. If we talk about his friend's abandonment, we should also talk about how Jesus' friends showed up to help him. This is what church is like when it's at its very best. Church is a community of people who help to rejoice and encourage each other when things are going well. Church is a network of relationships that we can lean on when we need support and care for the times when things are going poorly. Church is the body of Christ, the arms to lift, the eyes to weep, the voice to sing, and the heart to break for people of God. I have seen the people of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church do this for each other over and over and over. I have seen you celebrate and mourn. I have seen you applaud and cry for each other. I have seen you reach out and show up with support, physical, emotional, and spiritual. Now, we are not a perfect church, not by any measure, but I have witnessed moments when we have acted perfectly in love for one another and for our neighbors and for our community and for the world. Like the disciples and friends of Jesus, God is still working on us to make us into the church we could be. But I'm proud to be a part of our church, and I know that together we can get by with a little help from, one each, from each other. We are more than good enough. And that God is calling us to continue to grow in this group project together in powerful ministry in our community and in our world. Amen. Please join us as we sing, Take, O oh, Take Me As I Am. Take, O oh, Take Me As I Am. Nancy Green, lay leader at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come together today to give thanks for the awesome blessings that you have given us. Be with us as we go through our daily lives. Help us to do your will in everything we do. O oh God, who strengthens us so that we may strengthen others. Kindle in our hearts a flame of love for you and all people. Help us to live that our lives may be witnesses to your power. Help us by deeds of love and mercy to show forth thy praise. We especially pray for the people of Ukraine and all those affected by war. Be with each of them. Give them courage and mend their broken hearts. Be with President Putin. Soften his heart so that he can set aside his evil ways. We pray for all who have health concerns. Place your healing hands upon them. Be with all of those who have cancer. We pray that they will find comfort and healing. With the COVID numbers on the rise again in our country, we ask that people will make good choices in their interactions with others. We ask for quick and complete healing for those who have had surgery and for those struggling with their mental health. We ask for peace. We pray for our Compass and Whipple programs and all of the ministries of our church. 
We hope that the lives that are touched by these programs will be blessed. Be with all of those who are grieving, because grief is never easy, but is a sign of love for each other. In closing, let us remember those whom we may not have mentioned by saying a silent prayer. Will you join me in saying the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thanks for joining us in worship this morning. We are entering into the holiest and busiest time of the church year. Here are the top 10 ways you can grow your faith at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church in the weeks to come. Number 10. Invite your friends. Our community Easter egg hunt will be next Saturday morning, beginning at 11 a.m. But prior to the event, we need your donations to help make it a success. Candy's nice, but cash will allow us to make sure we have the right mix of Easter candy for all of the ages that will be joining us. Drop your check with Easter candy in the memo line at the church office. Number 9. If you're considering membership at Douglas Avenue, you're invited to a special new member meetup on Sunday, May 1st at 9.15 a.m. in the Great Hall. It's a great way to learn about membership at Douglas Avenue. Number 8. On Sunday, May 1st from 11.45 a.m. until 12.45, you're invited to a sneak preview and housewarming party at the new Wouldn't It Be Lovely residence at 801 South Grand Avenue West. Let's get the new residence off to a good start for the associates of Wouldn't It Be Lovely. Number 7. This church has a proud tradition of support for Habitat for Humanity. On April 24th, there will be the Walk for Housing, followed by a drive through chicken dinner. For more details, see this week's e-newsletter. Number 6. Our own Gwen Lewis is well known for her artwork and for her generosity to the United Methodist Women. Join the UMW as they celebrate Gwen and her artwork at 11.30 a.m. in the Great Hall on Sunday, April 24th. Number 5. The DAUMC Community Garden is off to a great start. Help make it a wonderful growing season at the first Community Garden Workday on Saturday, April 23rd from 9 a.m. until noon. Number 4. Join us for Monday Thursday Worship this Thursday, April 14th at 7 p.m. There will be worship in the sanctuary or online. Holy Communion for all people will be offered. Number 3. Good Friday worship services will be available at 7 p.m. on Friday, April 15th. Join us in the sanctuary, or you can also join us online for a special worship service prepared by the Illinois Great Rivers Conference. On Good Friday, Pastor Meredith will also be taking part in a modern-day Stations of the Cross. This walk through downtown Springfield will kick off at noon and will visit many governmental and social locations in downtown Springfield. For more information, see this week's e-news or call the church office. Number 2. Next Sunday morning, the DAUMC Youth Group will be selling coffee and donuts to raise money for their mission trip to Mountaintop in July. Enjoy a sweet treat on Easter Sunday morning and be generous in your free will donation to the members of our youth group. And number one, please join us next Sunday morning for one of four Easter worship opportunities. There's a 7 a.m. sunrise service in the community garden, an 8.15 a.m. worship in the sanctuary with communion for all people, 10.30 a.m. worship in the sanctuary, and 10.30 a.m. online worship on Facebook and YouTube. 
Of course, none of these programs would be possible without your generous financial support. You know the many ways in which we try to make it convenient to donate to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, and your donations are always appreciated. If you're worshiping in person this morning, you'll find handy donation boxes in the front and back of the sanctuary. While you're at it, please take a moment to fill out our online contact form. You'll find a link in the comments section of online worship and a QR code on the front of this morning's bulletin for in-person worship. Now, it's time to return to worship. Please join us in singing, Lead Me to the Cross. Our Lenten series, Good Enough, is based on a book of devotions of the same name by Kate Bowler and Jessica Ritchie. It has been such a joy to follow along through the readings, devotions, and in our worship series together as we have been seeking alternatives to the pressures of perfectionism, to claim being good enough. I hope that you have been engaging these themes and having a meaningful experience through this entire series. You can still join with one of our small groups this week for debriefing and deepening your experience through conversation with others. And all of the information on how to do that is in the e-newsletter.
As we move through the worship experiences of Holy Week this week, I pray that you will join in these times to worship, to fully dive into the drama and power of this week through to the celebration of resurrection life on Easter. Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church has worship this Monday, Thursday, April 14th, online and in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. Good Friday, April 15th, online and in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. And then Easter sunrise at 7 a.m. in the garden at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. 815 communion for all people in the sanctuary. 1030 Easter festival worship in the sanctuary and 1030 festival worship online. I encourage you to join with your church family in all of these powerful worship experiences. If you've heard nothing else today, I hope that you can hold in your heart that you are not alone. That you are standing on the foundation of loved ones, friends, communities, and spirit that are created to support you, form you, and bless you as the group project that you are. And thank God for it. Even so, we can feel lonely. So we end today's worship service with a special blessing from the book, Good Enough. Receive this blessing for when you feel lonely. Blessed are we who cry out, God, I need a friend to share the simple, unaffected joys that come, the troubles unbidden, those too heavy to sustain. Blessed are we opening our hands in readiness to risk intimacy, to receive the gift of friendship, and give it in return. Thank you for joining in this time of online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm so glad that you've been here, and I pray that your whole experience has been uplifting and meaningful, that you will continue to join with us in online worship or for worship in the sanctuary and all of those worship services throughout Holy Week, but always here online at 1030 and in the sanctuary on Sundays at 815 and 1030 a.m. We love to pray with you, so I hope that you will use that contact form today so that you can put your prayer requests in there that go straight to our pastors and prayer team, and also use that contact form so that we can connect with you, that we can come up alongside you in your life of faith, and we can get that e-newsletter to you with all of the opportunities for connection, worship, and service. And now, may the God who loves all of creation, especially the lonely part, and Jesus, our companion along this crooked path called life, and the Holy Spirit who loves to improvise and show up in just the most surprising ways, go with you, dwell among you, and give you joy. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen. Mm -hmm.